Hello board game spirits wandering the multiverse. Today I'll be showing you everything you need to know about the new Endogenesis Kickstarter and its brand new expansion. Yes? Ah yes, the pepperoni and the deluxe? Yeah, that's me. I'll be right there. Welcome back for another episode of my Kickstarter alerts. For this one, we're covering Endogenesis. I'll go over the different modes, the campaign, and what you can expect if you back this one. So Endogenesis is a one to five player game. In Endogenesis, each player is a cosmic spirit pinned against each other, vying for ultimate godhood, leveling up by killing monsters and each other. So this game can be played competitive, co-op, or solo. The co-op mode is two player only, while the standard mode plays three to five. There is another mode called tactical mode that has simplified rules that's recommended to play if you're playing with more than three players and you're not familiar with the game yet. So this campaign covers two areas. First you have the core game that's getting a second printing with updated rules and then you have the expansion that adds a bunch of new cards and some slight tweaks to the rules. If you want to see the changes for the second printing both rule books are available although there is a change log posted on BGG that's covering all these changes. Tracking all these changes and providing them to the public is actually a lot of work and I read through some of the threads on BGG and there's actually been a lot of back and forth between the designers and the community, which really shows the diligence put into this game. And great games don't start out that way. Talking to your community and getting feedback is really how you develop a game and improve it into something that's really fun to play. So seeing this community activity should really give you confidence in the game. I'll put a link to the change log in the description below if you want to check it out. So I'm going to describe what the core game plays like and then I'll go into the expansion. So the goal of this game is to gain three prisms. Prisms are achieved by landing the finishing blow on a legendary monster, which I'll explain in a little bit. So at the start of a game, you get your health tracker, a couple skill cards, and some shards. And the first thing you're going to do is customize your character based on what you have. So you can equip any of the skill cards that you started with. You have your active skills, your reaction skills, and your ultimate skill. Active skills are the ones you're going to be using the most in the game. They are basic actions which you mostly use to attack other players and monsters. These go face up and are visible to all players. Reaction skills on the other hand you keep hidden from the other players and you can activate these when you get attacked to help defend yourself. You can only have a total of three of these skill cards, but you can replace any of them with a new skill card, discarding the old one. Once you have three skill cards, and only once you have three skill cards, you can equip an ultimate card. And that's going to give you additional skills that are a little more powerful. So once you get four skill cards, you can actually upgrade once more to get a class card. Class cards are pretty powerful and grant you a one-time effect and a permanent effect. Skill cards come in a few different categories, and if you get all your skill cards in a certain category, you'll get the class card that matches that category. If your skill cards don't all match the same category, then you just get to pick which category you get. This might sound unbalanced because you could just get whatever skill cards you want and then pick your power, but keep in mind getting skill cards in matching categories augment and chain off each other much better and make you much more powerful. Adding shards to a skill card upgrades it permanently. Adding shards to your health increases your health and its maximum by one. Whenever you complete a row of health upgrades on your health tracker, you get a powerful one-time use wonder card that you can use on your turn. Each round, players will start by drawing from the main Realm of Knowledge deck, which is mostly skill cards. After all players have drawn their cards, the combat phase begins where players take turns fighting a monster. Any time that there's no monster card revealed, the game is suspended and cards are drawn from the realm of chaos until a new monster is revealed. Other cards may appear like events and distortions, which cause other effects in the game. Since there's no monsters at the start of the game, that would happen immediately on your first combat phase. So for a player to attack, they can normally only use their skill card once per turn, and they need to spend energy to activate that card. Energy can be gained a lot of different ways, but the main way is by discarding action cards that you haven't equipped yet. Some monsters have abilities when they're attacked or when they're defeated, so you gotta be careful when you're attacking them. If you slay a monster, you gain the reward depicted on the card. If it's a legendary monster, you can expect that there's gonna be a prism as part of that reward. Instead of attacking the monster, you can also attack other players. They'll come back later with refreshed health. After all players have had their turn, the monster will activate attacking the players. Once that phase is resolved, players draw cards again and go back into the combat phase and this cycle continues until the game ends. Co-op mode plays similar, but you're not going to be attacking your teammate. 
So you're only going to be attacking the monster and you might even be sharing some items to help upgrade each other evenly. The cool thing with co-op mode is that a lot of different monsters can come out at once. I have played the co-op mode and these things can sometimes feel tacked on but I have to say I was pleasantly surprised with how fun it was. I haven't played with more than three people so I can't really comment on the tactical mode but I'll put the rules in the description so you can check it out if you're interested for yourself. So the Beyond expansion comes with a bunch of new changes. The first one being that a new category is added to the skill cards called the voltaic category and it generates and stores electric charges. This works differently than all other categories and accumulating these charges makes your skills stronger and can also allow for a special discharge effect where you discard all your charges to do a powerful action. The expansion also adds skill augmentation by allowing you to equip cards that modify the parameters of your skills so you can do things like lowering the cost or increase the strength. These are permanent and if you ever discard that skill card the augmentation gets discarded as well. In the original game I said you could only have up to four skills but with the expansion there's a whole new fifth skill slot and that slot allows you to have initiative or death cry skills. Initiative cards are armed on your current turn and then get activated immediately at the start of your next turn. Death cry skills are triggered when a foe slays you. These cards act similar to how the monster's abilities work that I explained earlier. Finally there is a small rule change that can be added to the game and that's to reveal three realm of knowledge cards above the shared player board and at the end of each player's turn, that player may discard two cards in their hand to take a card of their choice. These cards get replaced anytime somebody takes a card or at the start of the next full round. In addition to these changes, there's also a bunch of new cards added for monsters, events, and distortions that are going to add more variability across games, which is always nice. I'll have the rules for the expansion in the description below as well, so check them out if you're interested. I'm going to go over the pledges now, and currently there's just two pledges. I'll be going over even more info in this video, but I just wanted to pause for a second and say I hope you found this video useful so far. And if you did, I encourage you to hit that like button because it really helps with the YouTube algorithms. And also subscribe so that you don't miss out on future videos I release. These videos take a lot of work to put together and I don't get compensated in any way, so if you're feeling especially generous, feel free to check out my Patreon in the description below. With that being said, let's get on with the video. First we have the expansion package pledge that goes for 45 Singapore dollars, which is equal to about $32 US or $43 Canadian. So this pledge comes with the expansion, the upgrade pack for the core game, all stretch goals and one free player mat. Verification will be required for this tier to confirm that you have previously purchased the game. Secondly, we have the base game and expansion pledge. And this pledge goes for 104 Singapore dollars, which is about $74 US or $95 Canadian. This pledge comes with the second edition of the core game, the Beyond expansion and all stretch goals. One thing to note is both these pledges come with free shipping to the US, Singapore, China, and Hong Kong. Unfortunately for me, I live in Canada. So keep in mind you'll have to pay shipping if you don't live in one of those countries. If you're looking to get multiple copies of this game, there will be both the expansion and the core game in the add-on section. In addition to this, there's a super awesome add-on that I'm excited about, and that's the player mat. This is something I always felt was missing when I was playing the game, so it's really awesome to see that other people felt that this was missing, and they listen to their audience and are providing this as an option. If you're a previous backer, you're going to get one of these for free, but you're probably going to want at least three of them. Each player mat is nine Singapore dollars, which is about six and a half dollars US, or about eight and a half dollars Canadian. So I normally wait to tell you if I'll be back in a campaign, but I'll just tell you now. And the answer is yes, I will be back in it. I already own the game and I think it's really fun. I really appreciate how involved the designer has been in the community and that he's actively taking feedback from players. I work in the software business, so I know how important user testing is. So if you're still unsure if you want to back this game, you can actually check it out in Tabletop Simulator and try it for yourself. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. If this game has piqued your interest and you want to know more about the lore, this is actually based on a story and I'll leave a link to that in the description below as well. I'm really excited to see how this campaign goes and I'm super excited to try the expansion out for myself. I do have more videos with Kickstarter coverage for Kickstarters that are on right now, so be sure to check them out if you're interested in that. I'll leave some links in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, it really means a lot and I hope you found this useful. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, keep that shelf cluttered and the table full.